Uh, welcome to this webinar on HP Service Anywhere, Simplifying Your IT Service Desk. Uh, um, my name is Suresh GP. I'm the champion for uh, the uh, Bangalore chapter. Um, so it's quite exciting to be here to present the first webinar uh, for the Bangalore chapter. Um, just to introduce uh, the team here, uh, Sandeep Srinivas and myself are the leaders of the Vivid Bangalore chapter. You must have listened to, you must have listened to um, our uh, emails that have gone. Um, we have a HP Service Management Special Interest Group uh, with Mary, Flores, Morris, Laura, and Audra. So they are your leaders for the Service Management uh, Special Interest Group. A brief introduction about uh, the uh, speaker today. If we could move to the next slide. Um, so uh, if you just want to know about us, so Sandeep and so on. So today's presenter, I have uh, a great pleasure in introducing Hemant, who is Hemant Dathatriya, who is the pre-sales consultant, uh, technology strategist um, uh, in HP's software as a service division, focuses primarily on solutions that bring rapid time to value for customers' invest investments in HP software. Hemant has spent 14 years in HP in various divisions that included engineering, marketing, services, and now in pre-sales function. He has worked with customers extensively in Asia-Pacific region with special focus on China. His passions are on software as a service, service management, and IPv6. So, we welcome you, Hemant, for today's uh, session uh, on software as a service. Before we go, go into the session, a couple of um, housekeeping rules. So if you could move on to the next slide. This live session is being recorded. So um, all the recordings will be available to all the Vivid members and will be posted on the site. Um, the the slide deck will be shared as part of PDF after the session, so um, you can get a copy of it after the session. The session, please, we encourage you to post your questions in the questions pane. So uh, uh, just to give you the next slide to show how it looks like. So you see on the right-hand screen um, the question window, question pane, where you can actually post the questions. And what we will do is we will consolidate all the questions and probably take it at the end. So in order to make sure that there is no interruption in the flow, it's, it's, uh, we, we give some time and then we consolidate it and then uh, take over the questions. So with no further ado, I would uh, now hand it over to Hemant to take it forward. Over to you, Hemant. Thank you very much, uh, folks. Uh, uh, good afternoon and evening to all of you. Uh, just a quick check. Uh, Suresh, are you able to view my slides? Yes, that's right, Amit. I'm able to see the HP Service Anywhere Simple Scalable SaaS. Uh, fantastic. Uh, so, uh, folks, what we are going to do over the next uh, 45 minutes is uh, introduce you to HP's uh, new offering in service management, which is uh, HP Service Anywhere. Um, I'm sure all of you are familiar with um, uh, you know, uh, SaaS offerings. I'm pretty much sure that you know in your personal lives, uh, you have used uh, services from uh, you know Google and you know Facebook, uh, uh, those kinds of uh, you know cloud services, including uh, possibly uh, Amazon. Uh, it is a it's a trend uh, in the industry which we believe is an irreversible uh, trend. Uh, the uh, customer expectations today are. Uh, that uh, from from software as a service is that uh, there are no upfront capital uh, expenditure. Uh, customers have also started to exp you know uh, expect that the benefits that they get uh, by uh, uh, you know the consumerization of IT uh, could be extended uh, to the enterprise by way of you know predictable annual costs. And uh, most importantly, I think the biggest benefit that SaaS brings uh, to the enterprise 
is around uh, not having to administer uh, infrastructure for running these uh, services. Uh, the other trend that we are also seeing is that you know uh, for some of the examples that I've taken, like about you know, uh, you know personal services for Google, or Yahoo, uh, uh, and Facebook, these are all for you know these are all consumer grade uh, services. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, what enterprises are asking are uh, that they would like uh, the benefits of uh, you know uh, consumer cloud, but with all the the rigor uh, uh, and the expectations of the enterprise, which means that there is no com you know compromise by way of uh, you know um, uh, having you know DR and backup strategies in place uh, and so on. Uh, if you take a step back and you know for those of you who are very familiar with uh, service management solutions uh, and especially from uh, HP Service Manager, you also know that uh, at the end of the day, the objective of having a tool uh, is to be able to de deliver uh, effective service uh, IT services to uh, uh, to the end user uh, in, in in an enterprise. And uh, you know uh, you know however complex uh, the tools can get to become over a period of time, uh, quite simply speaking, you know. Their objective is really to you know to be able to simplify the process of uh, requesting and obtaining services and to be able to handle incidents quickly uh, within the enterprise. So over a period of time, uh, what we've seen uh, is uh, customers have started to uh, expect uh, all of this uh, to be packaged as uh, ITSM as a service, uh, which really begs the question of you know. Uh, what are the uh, you know customer and end user expectations when it comes to uh, availing IT as a service? Uh, at the end of the day, tool is only a means to the end, which means that customers today expect uh, you know tools to be very easy to evaluate, which means that you know uh, nobody has the kind of time or resources to conduct uh, proof of concepts that last uh, you know many multiple man months. Uh, they want to be able to go simply log in and expect. Uh, to be able to evaluate a tool and do a proof of concept or a trial, uh, you know, quite simply speaking. And um, some of you are also familiar about the uh, time it takes for, uh, you know, uh, uh, the value from the tool uh, to be also realized. It can take anywhere between, you know, three to six, uh, you know, months to effectively deploy uh, your organizational processes within. Uh, uh, within the enterprise and start to get value out of these tools. So, uh, our customers expect uh, you know tools to be uh, very quickly deployed and something that uh, you know is very easy easy to use and very uh, intuitive uh, to work with. And uh, the other challenge that uh, our customers have faced, uh, and we also seen this as a as a trend in the industry, uh, is. Um, once you set up and uh, implement uh, uh, ITSM solutions, uh, you know the more you configure and the more you uh, customize these solutions, the harder it becomes uh, for uh, you know upgrading the service uh, and upgrading the uh, the solution. So the expectation again, uh, you know, that's placed on us uh, from our you know by our customers is to ensure that uh, you know these upgrades are automatic. Uh, and that they're seamless in the back end and uh, you know the customer or the end user uh, simply focuses on using the tool and is not worried about what it takes in the back end to actually uh, run and administer the tool. The uh, other expectations uh, from our customers are also have to do with uh, you know no capital expenditure, uh, you know a predictable uh, OPEX model uh, and at the end of the day, to be able to start small and uh, you know add users uh, across multiple geographies uh, as you move forward in uh, rolling out your uh, uh, you know uh, solution uh, as as the requirements grow. And uh, as I mentioned to you, uh, there should be no compromise on the enterprise grade features uh, that a, uh, that an enterprise should expect. Uh, just because something happens to be offered uh, as a as a service or from uh, from the cloud. So at the end of the day, it's not just about using uh, tools, but uh, you know uh, our end users and customers also need experts uh, to stand by them uh, at, at an hour of need and to ensure that 
uh, the right uh, process expertise and the right tooling expertise uh, and the consulting expertise is there with them and something that can be packaged together as, as part of the service that uh, our customers can subscribe to. It great, gives us great pleasure to uh, unveil uh, HP uh, Service Anywhere. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a completely brand new uh, offering uh, from HP. Uh, we have in fact uh, taken a step back uh, we have completely re-engineered uh, our offering uh, in, in service management space and uh, we have just launched uh, a brand new offering uh, designed exclusively uh, for SaaS. And uh, you know, uh, if I were to put that in, uh, in highlights for you to be able to uh, remember quite easily, uh, this is a, uh, a service management solution that comes you know, packaged with a uh, with social IT uh, collaboration features. Uh, it brings uh, forward uh, uh, an interesting set of features, very useful set of features called as uh, cordless configuration that I will speak about in a moment. And then um, the other two points that I would like you to remember are that you know we make it uh, very easy and seamless uh, for you to stay correct, which means that uh, upgrades are uh, automatic and it comes uh, you know, uh, pre-bundled with uh, you know, lots of expertise from HP, not just about using the tool, but about uh, the process knowledge that we bring forward. So uh, one of the things we have uh, you know, looked at is you know, when uh, service desk agents uh, you know, work on a case, uh, it could be uh, service desk agents or you know, those who are working on uh, the incident and the problem uh, processes, uh, we, have, uh, we have seen that uh, sometimes there is knowledge uh, in the group and the community and uh, the tools should essentially uh, augment the capability that uh, operators bring to the table uh, in real time, which means that there is a need for you know, having uh, social uh, collaboration capability uh, within the toolset. And uh, we have uh, in fact uh, put this down as um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, part of our core uh, functionality, where uh, uh, you know um, our incident problem and change, uh, you know, uh, analysts are able to uh, speak uh, with each other, uh, you know, collaborate uh, with, with each other regarding uh, in uh, you know cases, and then uh, you know socially resolve uh, and update all the users regarding uh, you know common problems that uh, you know uh, common IT users uh, would face. And uh, we also have uh, a, a wonderful approach, uh, a fantastic approach architecturally to uh, resolve uh, issues about uh, uh, upgrades. Uh, we have a notion that we've introduced called as a cordless configuration. Uh, typically what happens uh, when you are you know, customizing and implementing a service management solution is that uh, you need uh, to not just know about the processes that you need to implement, but you also need uh, you know, programming experts, people who need, who must know JavaScript or who must know uh, some one language, a uh, programming language or another. And uh, what happens is then, then there is a mad uh, scramble to find you know, programmers who are experienced in certain tasks uh, without whom uh, you may not be able to proceed to the next step. And sometimes it is also difficult to stay uh, in touch with uh, the various you know, um, you know scripting and programming languages that are used in solutions. So it becomes uh, it's not just about having uh, you know skill availability uh, as a question, but it's also about uh, you know one programmer or uh, you know one technical specialist understanding the code written by somebody else. And then you have the question about you know code maintenance and so on and so forth. So what we've essentially done is uh, we have built uh, in uh, a model where uh, we have a, a, a graphical interface uh, which includes you know processes forms tables and so on uh, which is very intuitive to use and essentially um, you know significantly reduces the the need uh, to uh, write code it doesn't mean you can't write code you can of course extend uh, the system as you wish but it's not a must for those of you who'd like to simply you know start using the system the other advantage uh, you know that we have built in in service anywhere is uh, around uh, you know automated uh, upgrades. Uh, 
uh, typically, you know, there is a lot, not just about downtime, but, you know, simply upgrading uh, an ITSM solution from one version to another takes a you know, great amount of planning, uh, regression testing to ensure that, you know, what you built in the previous version doesn't get, uh, you know, broken when you upgrade. And uh, you need to ensure that, you know, everything uh, lines up. Uh, we have tried to, you know, uh, eliminate that headache uh, by uh, bringing in, uh, you know, the notion of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the HP system files uh, and, uh, you know, uh, customer uh, system fi customer files. So essentially making it very easy uh, to upgrade uh, without touching any customization or configuration that, uh, you know, our customers or end users might have it. In addition to that, what we've also done is, um, it's not just about making a tool available as a service, that we have actually taken the best practices uh, that we built over a period of time uh, with IT uh, service management by way of uh, knowledge of you know uh, processes and uh, built uh, a professional services option for you to help uh, jumpstart uh, the adoption of uh, service anywhere uh, in your organization. Um, some of you may have heard about uh, HP SaaS, uh, but I will just give you a little bit of an overview. There are a lot of you know um, um, providers out there uh, uh, who claim to provide uh, ITSM uh, as a service, uh, but essentially what I would like to you know highlight here is that HP SaaS uh, as an organization uh, you know has been in existence for you know more than 12 years now, and uh, we are very very experienced as a SaaS operator across multiple product lines uh, that HP supports. Uh, it's not just in the service management space, but also the application lifecycle management, uh, portfolio management, project and portfolio management, uh, monitoring, and uh, and so on. Uh, what it essentially means is that, you know, uh, we cater to a, you know, a breadth of uh, enterprises who have enterprise grade requirements. And in fact, you might be even uh, pleasantly surprised to know that uh, you know, close to 50% of our customers are actually financial services institutions who have the strictest of requirements you know, in ten, terms of, uh, you know, data retention standards and uh, uh, all the security, uh, you know, policies that need to be in place to uh, for them to be able to uh, convince their regulators that, uh, you know, their data is in the, in the right hands. So we are pleased to say that we are, uh, you know, ISO, 27001 compliant uh, by way of standard. We are independently uh, certified by KPMG uh, uh, annually. And um, the other, uh, you know, good news is that uh, we are, you know, compliant to the Cloud Security Alliance, uh, you know, the, the STAR uh, certification. Uh, in fact, you know, this is a very uh, laborious process. You know, just to get through the uh, this uh, CSA, Compliance uh, takes uh, more than six months, uh, even assuming that we can answer all of those questions uh, positively. Uh, but we have passed, uh, uh, you know, this with uh, flying colors, and uh, it's good news overall, right? So, in addition to that, we bring, you know, um, three nine availability, which is ninety nine point nine percent uptime uh, as as part of the standard SLA uh, that we offer uh, for for uh, all our services. And in addition to that, we do have you know both phone and web support uh, available 24/7 uh, uh, from anywhere in the world. Um, I'd like to stress uh, here that uh, you know uh, when we took a step back, you know we looked at, um, at the way our uh, end users interact with the tool. And uh, one of the you know important design decisions we made is to give it a a simple, lightweight uh, you know uh, look and feel, which is based on a modern uh, you know Web 2.0 interface. And uh, as you can see in the picture uh, uh, that are projected on the screen, on the left side you will see uh, you know links starting with uh, you know favorites and dashboards. And then you can pick and choose, uh, you know, uh, your, uh, you know, respective module, which could be service desk, uh, incident change and problem management, and then configuration management. And then there are these links uh, that are available for uh, the operator to log in and make uh, admin changes as, as necessary. The other th interesting thing that you can also notice uh, here is uh, we have, uh, 
you know, uh, the, the blue tab, which is uh, basically an incident that has been opened up, uh, you can have multiple such, uh, you know, incidents uh, open um, uh, at the same time. Uh, and uh, that essentially gives you uh, the ability to switch through various incidents and cases, uh, you know, uh, and move back and forth uh, as you interact with uh, the end users and their uh, problems. The other interesting thing that you can see here is uh, labeled as workflow, and beneath that you can see uh, a, a few rectangles that are actually connected by, uh, you know, arrow marks and, and then gears. Uh, this is essentially our workflow engine. So uh, we have uh, the ability. Uh, we give the we give our end users the ability to uh, design their workflows. And uh, when an operator uh, for uh, either service desk or incident or change or whichever is the process that he's working on, um, when he opens an incident, he would always at any point in time uh, see uh, visually uh, the appropriate workflow. And then uh, depending on the stage that he is in. He can also notice, uh, you know, what uh, stage uh, that particular uh, incident uh, is maintained at, and then you can see the decision-making uh, gears that uh, uh, the uh, the process would follow as uh, um, as the operator would try to resolve the issue for the end user. On the right side, uh, what you will notice is uh, a conversation window. Uh, this is again very interesting and also, uh, you know, we think very useful. Uh, simply because the analyst, uh, you know, can uh, speak with uh, uh, the operator can speak with the, the respective analyst uh, in real time. Uh, he can add users, and then he can have a, a conversation going about that particular incident, and then then make a change uh, to the incident workflow um, uh, as uh, as required to resolve uh, uh, to, to resolve the end users problem. Um, other interesting stuff, uh, we have, you know, modern look and feel uh, for, uh, uh, you know, reporting. Uh, we are able to, uh, you know, provide uh, a detailed uh, dashboard for, you know, service desk or for the respective modules. Uh, the, uh, the, the users or the administrators or, or the managers involved can get detailed uh, reports uh, in various forms. It could be, you know, stack bar charts or it could be pie charts, or it could be information being grouped by, you know, various categories, uh, yeah, and so on. So you can get, you know, lots of information that could be sliced and diced in interesting uh, formats uh, for further uh, analysis. Uh, just to touch a little bit about uh, in-context, uh, you know, social collaboration, uh, what we've seen essentially is, uh, it you know definitely helps to know uh, who is the analyst related to a particular problem, uh, who uh, was the person who actually designed the process, or who could be those uh, you know people who are on shift who are uh, related to a particular application because you know users face these kinds of problems. So uh, if a if a user complains uh, about a uh, in a particular problem and if an incident is raised. Um, service Anywhere can actually suggest, um, you know, potentially a group of participants who can uh, participate uh, in a conversation for, to resolve a problem. And then, uh, so this is what we call as in context to a particular problem. And then we have, uh, you know, the, uh, the analyst uh, or, or the uh, operator can then, you know, pick and choose uh, who, uh, which of the users would be, you know, more relevant in, in solving the problem and drag those participants uh, in, into the window uh, and then start a conversation uh, in, in the right uh, side of the panel, uh, part of the window. So uh, again, you know, very useful in the context of, you know, collaboratively solving, uh, you know, end user problems. So, uh, the bill, so what are we trying to achieve here? Right. So, in in terms of uh, the end customers, uh, you know, business uh, needs and problems, uh, lines of businesses typically have you know um, satellite organization. It could be remote sites, um, and sometimes it is very difficult to roll out uh, you know these kind of services in in different parts of the world. 
And what we have uh, uh, basically taken a step back in is to is to offer uh, significantly reduced uh, you know, capital expenses uh, with a pay you as you go model. Uh, there is a very little you know operational overhead. Um, actually, you know uh, the way we have set up uh, the solution is uh, there is uh, you know almost no burden uh, to the end uh, end user or to the end user organization. And uh, most uh, importantly. Uh, we have, you know, brought together simplified, uh, you know, uh, labor cost. Simply, uh, simply because the uh, you don't need to uh, have a great deal of expertise, uh, subject matter expertise in a particular tool for you to be able to use it. Uh, it is uh, intuitive uh, to be able to use, and uh, you know, everything about the tool is uh, is you know uh, built to uh, you know increase. Um, the uh, the uh, or rather maximize the amount of value that uh, a, a end user organization can get uh, out of rapid deployment of the tool. So uh, to recap, uh, the key uh, features that we have. Uh, for those uh, of you who would be involved uh, in uh, uh, basically rolling out uh, service anywhere uh, in your organizations, uh, you will come across uh, a process designer along with a form table and a task editor. Uh, I will show you a, a picture of this uh, shortly. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the features that we uh, you know bring uh, packaged into the offering uh, you know out of the box. Our you know, service desk incident problem change uh, management. Uh, we've also introduced the notion of uh, you know service level targets, uh, configuration management, and you know common uh, workflows. So uh, just to touch on this a little bit, uh, see typically what happens with uh, with end customers and users is uh, they need to know um, how. Uh, an, uh, an incident or a problem or a change process uh, ought to look like uh, as per best practice. And typically what we've seen is, you know, the um, customers uh, are most uh, benefited when, uh, you know, ITIL v3 best practices uh, are deployed uh, in a particular tool. Uh, what we have tried to do uh, here is as soon as you subscribe to the service, the tool uh, comes you know, prepackaged out of the box with these ITIL v3 best practices. So how does that help? It helps in, in situations where uh, you just want to start using the tool and uh, you want to use the tool as per the ITIL v3 best practices. But of course, you know, we, re we realize and we recognize that you know, customers uh, uh, may have um, you know, uh, specific requests, uh, specific changes that need to be made to a particular process or the processes to follow a certain approval flow or uh, you know processes to be uh, tailored as per uh, uh, you know uh, end user requirements so we do support tailoring by way of you know form table and the task editor and the process designer but for end users who simply want to start using and start benefiting from the tool and i think this would uh, uh, you know uh, help such users to simply uh, jump start uh, uh, you know their deployment uh, of ITSM in, in their enterprise and also to recap um, the tool comes bundled with you know social collaboration uh, for those of you who are familiar with uh, SM which is service manager uh, you might be familiar with uh, the ESS self-service ticketing portal so we have uh, retained that uh, uh, in um, service anywhere and in addition to that, you know, we have actually also simplified uh, user and role administration. We have centralized this uh, for the sake of the administrator, uh, so we can authenticate against the customer LDAP, and uh, we also, you know, cache that data for improving the uh, performance uh, of uh, authentication against LDAP. We do support um, uh, integrations uh, via uh, web services. Uh, email as well as connected. Uh, for those of you who might be familiar with other HP solutions and uh, NSM, uh, you might be familiar with uh, the connected uh, uh, the modules. 
and integration so we support that as well and we do have a number of you know uh, tools and resources available for you know uh, uploading existing users and data and uh, uh, to be able to onboard customers very very quickly and uh, we also feature uh, you know seamless uh, uh, you know configuration updates over the course of the year and you know these are typically done you know multiple times in a year and uh, it is quite seamless to the uh, to the end user hey himan uh, we have a couple of questions i think it would be appropriate to ask at this moment uh okay um so uh, a question from han ping fong is uh, when a multi country presence when a multi country presence corporate customer bought hp service anywhere saas where is this saas will be hosted does the customer have a choice where to host this saas uh yes the the simple answer is yes uh, we uh, currently offer this uh, in three continents uh, one uh, option could be to be hosted in the us uh, in houston second option could be in uh, uh, in if if the if, if the customer needs it in uh, europe it could be in uh, london data center and the third option could be in sydney australia okay thanks the last uh, the second one is on slide 11 does hp offer saas for server and network monitoring like om a nnm imc uh you mean in terms of uh, infrastructure monitoring uh yes or are we talking about hosting those products on saas uh probably um uh, yeah I, I think if, if, could, if, yeah if the question was about uh, you know uh, om and nnm Uh, we do not offer uh, hosted versions of these software on saas okay he was talking about infrastructure monitoring yeah infrastructure monitoring we do have a solution we uh, in fact we do uh, have uh, the bsm uh, solution which is uh, uh, you might be familiar with uh, bsm uh, you know 9.x uh, which includes uh, you know uh, side scope uh, and you know uh, agent trace monitoring for infrastructure so all of that is supported on saas today okay so uh, in the interest of time uh, just have a couple of more slides uh, suresh so uh, this is to give a picture right of yeah. what uh, an end user would uh, or a or an administrator of a of an enterprise would uh, you know come across uh, while using uh, service anywhere so the front end interface uh, for uh, a designer would actually start with Uh, the workflow editor, and the workflow editor is a graphical editor where uh, an, uh, a, a designer could, you know, uh, pick an out-of-the-box process for, let's say, incident process, and then uh, he can, you know, click on any of the boxes, change the attributes, change the fields, change the labels, uh, and then, uh, in fact, even insert um, a, a, any other uh, steps in that process. Uh, and also alter the decision making criteria at uh, any of these process so essentially the process that comes out of the box can be picked you can redesign it you can relabel it you can do whatever you want with it to suit your end uh, you know client requirements and then once you save it uh, you can move on into uh, the uh, the other part of it which is basically to uh, work with the table editor so uh, the form and the table editor give you the interface to uh, design uh, the look and feel of those forms in the way uh, they present themselves to end users and in, in addition to that the table editor uh, you might notice here in this picture that you have you know the little round hp logo marks right and there are some tables that don't have that mark essentially uh, what essentially hp has done here is as a design decision we have marked uh, you know uh, certain tables as hp proprietary Uh, and hp system tables and uh, uh, those uh, would be uh, marked read only uh, the tables could be uh, you, you could add additional fields you could change certain attributes and anything you do with it actually becomes an extension uh, that is maintained uh, separately and uh, if if customers require they can also create uh, new tables you know based on their needs Uh, what we've done by you know separating the hp system tables from the customer tables is 
uh, we have allowed customers the freedom to customize and configure and extend the product uh, the way they wish without touching uh, what is important for uh, upgrades. So this is very important for upgrades because HP will now be in a position to do automatic upgrades in the back end without breaking any of the configurations and uh, uh, customizations that a customer may have made. So this is to ensure service continuity that we have taken you know, uh, this uh, design decision. Architecturally, uh, there are actually four layers. So uh, uh, the front end layer is a modern um, you know, web 2.0 interface which you know, uh, supports with HTTPS secure two-way communication. And there is a runtime environment layer that supports you know, 3,500 concurrent sessions. And then uh, this is actually designed for redundancy, high availability to ensure that uh, you know, this is basically designed for SaaS. And in addition to that, the application layer, like I mentioned, the uh, combination of application and database layer will provide the kind of delineation that you need to ensure that uh, you know, the HP system tables and data are ma maintained separately from the customer configurations and customizations so that uh, whatever upgrades we make are uh, you know, uh, uh, upgrade proof and in the sense that you know, uh, to ensure that there are no failures. Uh, to touch upon uh, packaging and pricing, uh, uh, we have a simple uh, per user price. Uh, we don't actually charge uh, separately for all the modules. So in the sense that if you bought uh, maybe 50 users, uh, the 50 users are uh, entitled for all the modules that come with this, uh, the offering. And uh, uh, the other good news is, of course, we are flexible in the way we uh, charge for users. We give you uh, an option to choose between named and floating users. And um, for those of our customers uh, who are uh, currently with uh, service manager or with uh, you know, service center or service desk, we do have special transition pricing uh, available, which means that you know, uh, to uh, protect uh, the investments that you have made uh, with our products, uh, with on-premise, uh, we are in a position to you know, uh, give you uh, significant discounts. Uh, to be able to transition from your environment on premise uh, over to service anywhere. We do have uh, at a nominal charge uh, you know, additional environments and reporting server uh, available. The other good news of course is that you know upon processing the purchase order at our end uh, you can have a production environment uh, you know deployed in about 24 hours. And uh, it's a single user per month per user charge. Um, this includes you know uh, support, HP support it also includes upgrades and uh, we think it's a fantastic deal because you know there are no hidden costs. So at this point in time, uh, Suresh would you like to step in and you know uh, share a little bit about the Service Anywhere Foundation service? Uh, I'm, um, I'm a business consultant with HP Software uh, Services so probably this five, uh, this uh, comes under my uh, suite of uh, uh, doing services for our customers. So what we have seen is when we talk about SaaS, the, the one and uh, most important part that the customers ask is how quick can we up and running? So what they want is a solution which is readily deployed, has the instant best practices and can go up and running, right? So if you look at uh, the, the slide here, it just talks about uh, a, a period of exactly a month. Uh, uh, prior to start you have actually collected the customer preparation and prerequisites um, just to make sure that you know exactly what is the information that the customer requires in terms of organization content and other stuff. And then you actually start out with the kickoff and then design, then you build and configure. It could be a remote option so there is no need for um, an agent to come here and do it uh, um, on the system. They can do it remotely so that saves the, the cost involved. And once it's been built and configured based on the data imports, all integrations being with outbound, uh, the LDAP integrations, uh, cell service logins, then it moves on to the test and acceptance. So be it functional testing, acceptance testing, and go live. And then in, within five days, it go live with support. So from kickoff and design till transition is just exactly 30 days. And end user training and project management can be taken over in, in during the whole cycle. End user training can can be done anytime uh, before the uh, go live date, right? So as long as it's completed before the go live date, we have this. So it's a it's a it's a good offering of foundation service, 
that with the kind of SaaS capability that we have, we could redeploy it at the custom environment uh, and get the environment up and running with all the data configurations that you expect within 30 days of time. So um, with that, I will uh, also uh, ask um, uh, uh, Hemant to give a short demo of the service anywhere. And once we uh, get to that, we will take upon these questions. There's a good, lot of amount of questions that have come in. Uh, please keep that uh, you know posted. We will uh, take the questions at the end. Um, Hemant, over to you. Uh, thank you very much, sir. So, uh, what I'm going to do, uh, folks, over the next you know uh, six or seven minutes is show you a recorded uh, demonstration, um, and then we will uh, move over into a Q and A. Uh, folks, are you able to see my screen? Yeah, that's right. Uh, go ahead, uh, Hemant. We're able to see your okay, screen. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. So what we're going to see here is a, a use case where uh, there is a user who is actually facing a PeopleSoft uh, connectivity problem. So um, as you can see that uh, uh, this user logs a, a call and uh, that becomes uh, logged as an incident and the analyst is you know looking and, and trying to do some analysis on this and uh, he looks at the people soft issue and then um, logs uh, an incident uh, as you can see below in the in the workflow process uh, once the call is logged, uh, it moves into the phase of uh, you know, uh, categorization. So you can see the entire life cycle of that incident and the green highlight shows you where you are uh, in that life cycle of that incident. So what uh, the user would do, uh, uh, what the, inc uh, the uh, incident analyst would do at this point in time is since it's a PeopleSoft uh, issue, uh, he clicks on applying a template. So this is actually pretty useful in cases where you know the applications you're dealing with, and uh, it helps you, you know, pre-fill and pre-populate all the fields uh, to be able to save uh, problems. So if an in an enterprise, if you have maybe ten types of applications, so you can have ten templates defined, so that it becomes very easy for the analyst to move forward, and they don't have to keep, you know, spend all the time in, in filling forms. So what the uh, analyst also does here is um, uh, clicks uh, the social collaboration window uh, and it pops up a list of names of uh, people who could be relevant in helping solving uh, uh, you know that issue so uh, that could be based on um, uh, you know uh, people who would have maybe uh, owned the service or people who would have defined uh, the service process or people who could be related to that application uh, you know, those people could be added into the conversation, into the social collaboration window. And uh, as you can see, uh, a conversation has begun in the, in the window about, you know, uh, does anyone know uh, why the users uh, are not able to access uh, PeopleSoft? This, uh, uh, the incident that they're investigating now is about uh, PeopleSoft being very slow to access. So once uh, that information is, uh, you know, exchanged uh, between uh, uh, the analyst uh, and the application expert, uh, what the the analyst uh, passes uh, the information back as to uh, uh, a suggestion with uh, uh, some change ticket that could have potentially uh, caused the issue. Uh, he's trying to investigate by looking at uh, any changes made to the application uh, over the preceding 24 hours. And he links that back into this incident as a uh, as a likely cause. So now they know that uh, the problem was caused by an upgradation or a patch upgrade uh, to PeopleSoft, and uh, you know this information uh, is updated into the uh, into the form and and then saved. So uh, there is a discussion uh, among the analysts now about you know what could be the uh, you know potential workaround 
to get around this problem. And the suggestion that is made uh, is, well, why don't you use uh, as the Citrix client instead to get access? And uh, as you notice, the workflow is still at the categorization phase. So, um, so uh, what what he does next is to go and update uh, uh, that uh, you know uh, for all users who are uh, who have faced uh, uh, this issue and were complaining about uh, PeopleSoft application being slow. Uh, all of those uh, issues are linked to the change uh, that was made uh, in the previous day with an update. And uh, uh, an operator uh, update being sent to everybody, saying the workaround proposed is that uh, you could start using uh, Citrix line in the meantime. So that uh, activity is then uh, saved uh, with, the, with the update being given. And uh, you notice that uh, once once the uh, proposed solution uh, is is typed in, uh, it would also move uh, the status in in the workflow uh, as, as well. So the operator has actually marked it uh, to resolve. And then uh, saves it. So this moves the uh, uh, incident through uh, the workflow. As you can see, that it has skipped through the uh, the various processes, and it has uh, you know reached the uh, final stage, which is uh, a review. Uh, what you can also notice is that as the workflow, uh, as the incident uh, moves through the workflow, you also see that the associated screens also change with it. So, uh, so we just have five minutes. I think uh, we must. Uh, are we are we close to that uh, completion? We just have about uh, fifteen minutes. Yeah, we're, um, we're, yeah. we're almost done. I think. Okay. So we have a good amount of uh, questions here. So I thought we will uh, spend some time on uh, questions as well. Sure. Fantastic. So. Uh, to step back, um, uh, what I would like to uh, you know leave behind uh, is uh, a request uh, for you to register for a free trial at hpserviceanywhere.com, and uh, you can also follow our ITSM blog, and uh, you know there are a lot of other online tutorials uh, available uh, through the HP Software channel uh, in uh, YouTube. Uh, of course, this, uh, this slide deck will be made available to you after this uh, uh, you know, call, and then uh, feel free to get in touch with us uh, uh, with your evaluation. So uh, over to you folks, uh, and uh, I'm happy to take uh, any questions. Right. So thanks a lot, uh, um, Hemant, for, for giving that presentation. I think in summary, it was uh, three to four elements that you covered neatly was low cost, highly effective, rapid deployment, Codeless configuration, so seamless upgrades, and uh, it's it's going to be uh, you know lightweight. So I think these are key aspects that you emphasize as part of HP Service Anywhere. So one of the questions that I wanted to ask uh, uh, was, we have already HP Service Manager in place, so we are also having um, uh, HP Service Anywhere. So does that mean that we will stop uh, again upgrades from 9.3 of uh, Service Manager uh, and only continue with Service Anywhere? What's the kind of roadmap looking like? Oh, that's a fantastic question. In fact, I'm sure that is on you know, a lot of people's minds. Uh, you know, uh, for those of you who may not be familiar, uh, you know, till about uh, September of last year, we, uh, we used to offer SM 9.3 on SAS, the same version. And uh, so it was supported both on-prem as well as uh, on SAS. We took a step back and we realized that we need, if we wanted to uh, you know, offer uh, service management on SAS, we wanted to basically re-engineer the product uh, for SaaS. And the reason you see Service Anywhere here is that this is an offering that has been designed from the ground up for SaaS. And as far as uh, SM is concerned, 
uh, we do have a fully committed three-year roadmap for SM uh, 9.3 onwards on-premise. Uh, we do realize that we do have uh, two types of customers, those who prefer uh, on-premise solutions and those others who would like to prefer something, uh, you know, lightweight, easy to start with uh, and, uh, you know, as a policy decision that it needs to be on SaaS. So we do have fully committed roadmaps, three-year roadmaps for both of these options. Great. Um, the next question, uh, there's a whole lot of questions, but then uh, we will see um, in terms of uh, questions, whatever we get covered. Um, integrations. Is it feasible to integrate all other HP BTO tools and SAP or other vendor tools? Do we need to have a knowledge regarding certain skills or coding language? If yes, what is the language used? This is a question from Apeksha Prasad. Uh, good question. So today we support, um, you know, web services. Uh, so you simply need to know um, the visuals that we need to connect with. Uh, if you're able to use, uh, you know, web services to connect with your respective applications, that's fantastic. Uh, for the rest of the BTO tools uh, that you might be familiar with, uh, you know, uh, in, in your solutions, uh, we support connected. So in that sense, uh, we have service anywhere adapters to connect it, and connect it, of course, connects to all the other tools put together. So in that sense, uh, we have the mechanism to be able to integrate with other tools. Okay, great. Um, next one is um, from a migration strategy from HP Service Manager to Service Anywhere. How can we take uh, business logics defined in SM? For, for, for example, the format control links scripts to Service Anywhere. Can we do that or are we talking about only the data from uh, HP, uh, are we talking about data or the uh, like uh, locations, contacts that could be migrated from service manager to service anywhere? Uh, I would actually recommend a, a PS a quick start service in, in this case because uh, one is of course in terms of your user data. Uh, I think uh, we do offer tools uh, which allow you to uh, move uh, user data across. Uh, we do not recommend, we, first of all we don't support and we do not recommend moving uh, all past incidents uh, into the new system. Uh, thirdly, when it comes to, uh, you know, your uh, implemented processes, uh, see what we support in Service Anywhere is, you know, simple out of the box ITIL v3 processes. And it helps to have a first level assessment of uh, the customization that you would have done with your uh, processes as it is implemented. Uh, there needs to be a little bit of a mapping between the processes that you have and the processes that you ought to build uh, uh, in, in our environment. If you do have a document where you have documented your processes, and I think that should solve about 70% of your uh, you know, migration related effort. Because what you're essentially doing is taking that you know, process knowledge and looking at the tool and saying, okay, I want uh, service anywhere to be able to do the process that I currently have. And that, that uh, you know, simplifies your migration. If you don't have that, I would recommend that you engage with you know, professional services uh, to be able to you know, provide you with that uh, uh, you know, as-is assessment of your, of your process. Great. Uh, the next question is on the auto, um, on the, um, on the auto upgrades, will it uh, take care of integrations with other tools as well? Or are we talking about, let's say, from an existing version of Service Anywhere, does it actually move on to the next uh, version seamlessly, but not the integrations? Uh, it includes integrations, and that is the intention. So the way we are doing this is that, you know, you have uh, tables that are, uh, that are used by the system. There are tables that have been extended by our customers for configurations, and then there are integrations that come back. The impact of having this layered architecture, if you recollect, you know, I, I put together a picture of uh, you know, four layers in the architecture. Yeah. The reason we have a layered architecture is to be able to delineate, to ensure that there's no risk between one layer and the other, right? So that way, HP is able to get away with upgrading system tables without actually impacting anything else in the system. So the layered architecture approach actually helps in this regard. Okay, great. Um, is it possible to customize, uh, uh, Swapna Aburi asks, is it possible to customize a new module in SaaS like HP Service Manager? Uh, yes, you can. So uh, the, 
the interesting thing here is that let's say you pick a module like uh, incident. Uh, so you go and you look at uh, the out of the box uh, process that comes with it. Uh, if you don't like what you're seeing or if your needs are something else, you can um, uh, you know insert a step, you can insert approvers, you can change uh, actions. Like for example, if uh, a certain step leads to something else, the actions that are required at that step could be changed. So you can actually uh, extend uh, uh, the, the module and the process uh, to suit your organization requirements. Uh, so in that sense, you know, it comes with best practices, but at the same time it is extensible uh, as long as uh, uh, you have uh, your own reasons of why you're doing that. Great. Um, this is an interesting question um, from Han Ping Feng. If customer wants a charge based on number of tickets of incident, problem, and change requests, so that they can charge back to their each department. Uh, can uh, SaaS allow doing so? Well, uh, it certainly is an interesting question. Uh, as far as you know, uh, we are concerned uh, in SaaS, uh, we do only charge you based on number of users. But at the same time, the reporting uh, allows you uh, to collect information about types of incidents, degrees of se severity, um, the amount of taken it has time it has taken for resolution and so on. So, if you'd like to use the report as a basis of a financial uh, invoice to say at, at the end of the month, you know we have handled uh, you know 75 calls of severity one, and hence we will charge you on so forth. Yeah, you can use, but uh, we don't have a chargeback module in the tool. But we do have reporting available in the tool, in the sense that you know you'll be able to take the data authoritatively to your end customer and end user. Right. So I think we'll have one more final question. I know that a couple of questions are still pending, but uh, just to make sure everybody are um, having that time. So what is the benchmark against uh, similar tools? I mean, uh, comparing with ServiceNow or Remedy uh, or ITSM 7.5, how do you see SaaS? In 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 uh, that's a question from Ravi Kumar B B N. Fantastic. I love this question and in fact uh, it's a very important question to us. Uh, that is the reason the Service Anywhere offering exists today and we have done that important benchmark. Uh, we have benchmarked against uh, our competitors. So uh, speaking of uh, you know BMC, uh, BMC actually has you know two offerings. You know you can you can do uh, Remedy, uh, Remedy Force which is you know, BMC running on the Force platform and then you also have Remedy on Demand. Uh, actually, uh, we think that you know, first of all, BMC uh, has uh, confused the market by having two offerings. Right? I think they're not able to de decide which is strategic. A uh, lot of customers are coming back and saying, for Remedy Force, if there is a problem on the platform and if there is a data breach or data confidentiality, who is responsible? Is BMC responsible, or is it Salesforce.com, who is running the platform that's responsible? You do not have uh, one uh, throat to choke. And uh, I think to some extent they have answered that question with Remedy on Demand. But we believe that it is uh, not a, a scalable uh, uh, platform. Okay. And speaking of uh, you know, ServiceNow, uh, we also noticed that uh, ServiceNow of course came um, uh, with the, the, you know, the SaaS offering as, as an innovative uh, thing. But uh, what we have seen is that uh, ServiceNow lacks uh, the other tools uh, that are needed in an operational environment like for example you know uh, monitoring and automation and so on. Of course they claim that they in, uh, integrate with everybody else but at the end of the day they are a pure play uh, you know service management player. As far as HP is concerned, HP's position is actually very different. We are a market leader in the areas that we work in which is in, in, uh, in terms of monitoring automation for example and service management and our, you know integration with our you know DevOps uh, side of the story. So for us, we uh, we are probably the only vendor who has a complete offering now, from service management as uh, on SaaS to monitoring on SaaS to uh, application lifecycle management and DevOps on SaaS. We are pretty much uh, the most comprehensive offering uh, uh, in the industry. Okay, any other questions? I think we are we are on the top of the art. So what I'm going to ask is, if people are interested, uh, we would like to hand over a white paper on SaaS. So if you are, want to have it 
as a copy of our uh, SAS white paper, please uh, uh, put it into your question pane and we will have it send it across to you, uh, the white paper. So um, with that, this is the, the, the session is recorded. Um, uh, we, we look forward to having you host another session from the Bangalore chapter. On behalf of the entire Bangalore chapter team and Hemant, uh, we thank you all for attending today's webinar. The, the slide deck along with the, um, uh, the, uh, the recording will be posted into the Vivid site and be posted to, to all our Vivid members. So with that, I will hand it over to um, Stephanie uh, to, to do the closing comments. Oh, thank you all for joining today. Uh, look in the next few days for the Vivid web on the Vivid website and your email with the link to where uh, the recording and the questions and answers in a written format as well as the slide deck will be posted as Suresh mentioned. Glad you could join us today and um, we will, if you did indicate in the questions or the follow-up survey uh, that you would like the white paper, we will email that to you as well. Thanks again for joining and have a great evening, afternoon or morning wherever you are. Thanks a lot guys and have a good day. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.